Hey friends, what's happening? This is Dr. Heather coming to you live from Ask Dr. Heather, also known as the Keto Doc, and I am actually prepping for the week. I know it's Monday, and usually do prep stuff on Saturday morning, but we had an open house on Saturday, so just want to actually, um, I'm gonna share this really quick if I can to my homepage if it works for me. I don't know if I can, but I want to let you know, let me know where you're actually watching from. I'm just going to give you a little bit of prep stuff. I haven't done this for probably well over a month and people have been saying, have you not been eating? Have you not been shopping? We haven't seen you doing very much of your cooking, so, or doing very much of my shopping. Usually Dr. Ralph does all the big shopping and he would do the big hauls and when the food would come in, I would talk about it and we would try to get our food put away pretty quickly. So today I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna do. We are down on our house total. Um, Christian, one of my sons is actually um, with the Kansas National Guard, so he's actually on his two and a half week summer stuff that he does for National Guard stuff. My mom is visiting a friend, Nick is home, Isaac's at college, and Mitchell's also with um, active military, so he's out on his summer mission. So what we're gonna do today is something that we actually love and super, super good for your body. I know I'm in between heights right here. I love cooked cabbage, it's also good raw, but this is actually two pounds of cooked cabbage. A whole cup of cabbage is two carbs. So this is cooked cabbage, I'm sorry, this is raw cabbage we're gonna cook up. It is, um, and you can take a shredder or you can buy it already pre-shred, but let me know where you're watching from. So we're gonna cook this up and you can, was I intended to actually put, we had tacos um, left over from deer meat, but we're gonna actually cook that and within with this, but we don't have it left over because we ended up eating it yesterday. So I was gonna do the shredded cabbage with the leftover deer meat that was taco meat, but we end up having a leftover sausage. So we've got several different types of sausage here that we're gonna mix with that. So we're gonna do that for dinner. I'm gonna start with a big pan here and and I'm gonna put a full stick of butter in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic in there. If you have a garlic sensitivity, then don't use it. Somebody asked me that last week. So I'm gonna let that get nice and bubbly. And then I'm also gonna put in a whole entire onion in there. So I'm gonna chop that up. Let me know where you're watching from. So a lot of times people, I'm surprised by the people who really don't cook very much. And people say, well, I see all the stuff you buy, but how do you actually put it together? Show me how you cook that. And we know cabbage is a very low allergen. It's great for your stomach. I explained in my office like Brillo pads. So if you get toxins in your body, Cabbage is one of those foods like Brussels sprout and some other foods like artichokes. They go in there and once you eat them, they go through your intestines. They actually grab onto stuff through your liver and grab onto some extra bile salts and excess hormones. If you're estrogen dominant, it'll go and grab onto that stuff, whether it's red dye number 40 or excess estrogen or any other paraffins or things that you actually get um, toxins built up in your body and actually helps scoot them out. So it's a great thing to eat raw, steamed, broiled. Another great thing you can do with cabbage, I should have done that before I chopped it up, is take a fourth of a cabbage, wrap it with a piece of bacon, put some foil over it and put it on your grill or just put it in the oven. So I just chopped that yellow onion up and I put a whole onion in there. Onion is great. Um, it's a natural kind of antibiotic, natural antihistamine. So it's great. It also caramelizes and gives food a really sweet flavor. And I'm going to put two pounds, not two cups, but two pounds of cabbage in my pan. I know I can never get the video right. So I've got two pounds in there cooking and I'm going to let that cook probably at about a five or a six. Another thing you can do, and I wanted to do stuff kind of half ready-made and half on the go, so to speak. So I will end up cutting, to put a little bit of flavor in there because we're gonna have fajitas tomorrow night. So I did get, it's never perfect when you line this up beforehand. <laughs> so I did get some yellow and green and orange peppers. So you could put some peppers in there, but we're gonna have fajitas tomorrow night. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep those while this is cooking for the fajitas tomorrow night and cut up some more onions. I did stop at the store. You can buy them pre-cut up. So you could also put some peppers in there if you want. Red bell peppers have more vitamin C than a glass of orange juice. They're super high in vitamin C, also high in vitamin D. So a great, great antioxidant, a great source of calcium. You could also put some garlic or put some um, jalapenos in there, which I know we'll put some jalapenos in there because Dr. Ralph loves jalapenos, or you could put in some fresh made salsa. The canned stuff tends to have a lot of sugar in it. So again, you cook this pretty high. So I'm gonna put it on seven or eight. It takes about, and again, I've got a lot of cabbage in there. If I had the lid on it, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. Then once it gets cooking, I'm gonna pour in probably about, 
This is probably four cups of sausage. If I had ground beef, ground deer, um, you could do chopped chicken. You could do any type of meat in there just to make it kind of like a soup. You could put some, um, make it more like a soup and just put some broth in there. We're gonna make it more kind of like a cabbage stew, so it'll reduce down a little bit. Now in my next pan, I am going to get my Chipotle chicken ready for tomorrow. So I've actually, turned this around here, I've put about four tablespoons of bacon grease in my pan right here. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. And then I have got chicken thighs and I have got chicken tenders all washed and ready to go. And then I have pre-mixed up my Chipotle spice instead of putting it right in front of you guys. So I'm gonna take a minute to say hello from everybody. Hello, Cheryl from the UK and Nicole, Nicolay, Nicolette, however you say your name. Sorry if I mess it up. And Vicki, love, love having you here, Vicki Webb. I see you all the time and Sandy and Betty, thanks for being here. If there's something you want to know, let me know. But this is something my family loves. You can do it in Instapot. You can grill this. You can broil it. So we're actually going to pan fry it just because it would be nice. If someone was home and I could send one of the boys out to grill, one of the men in my house, I shouldn't say boys, one of the men, hashtag boy mom, I should send one of the men out to grill, but I actually have this made up. And what is in my Chipotle seasoning is for two pounds of meat, it's a half a teaspoon of Chipotle pepper, one tablespoon of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of cumin, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of coriander, and a half a teaspoon of um, sea salt. So I actually doubled that. I actually make a big jar of it in a mason jar. I buy all the spices and just pre-make it up. And so I've got that all mixed up. And I'm simply just gonna sprinkle it all over my chicken thighs and my chicken tender. So generally we grill this or I pan fry it and then I end up baking the rest of it just so it doesn't get dry. And then if you're gonna grill it, you can grill it on a kebab. You could um, grill it again with a bunch of veggies on top. We're actually gonna do it with some zucchini. So we'll slice the zucchini in fourth. And then again, that's gonna be for tomorrow. And then we're gonna go ahead and marinate the chicken. I'm sorry, the steak that I've got here. I've got steak ready to go. And then we're also gonna use some fajita seasoning. So yes, we're doing chicken tomorrow night. So we're rotating through our meats. We've got pork and cabbage tonight, chipotle chicken tomorrow with zucchini, and then we'll do the fajitas on the next night because you want the beef to really marinate for a couple of days. The salt's really going to help break down the fat, so you're going to absorb it much better. And then we'll do all the peppers with the fajitas. Danny's here, my German shepherd. If you're a dog mom, let me know. So I'm just going to mix the uh, chipotle seasoning up here with the meat. Why Danny barks everybody. And then we end up, if we don't, well, if we grill, we end up just chopping up. If you've ever been to Chipotle, put Chipotle down below. My kids love Chipotle. And then we'll do some cauliflower rice. We'll maybe do some leftover cabbage or we'll do some lettuce. I don't know what she sees. Danny, why don't you go to the kennel? Why don't you see what's in the kennel? That's a good girl. She's a two-year-old German Shepherd. So I'm literally just mixing up the Chipotle seasoning on here. I'm gonna put them right in the bacon grease. And we like to cook them on a high heat so they don't get dry. And then we just chop them up and they chop up. You can freeze it really, really well. So I will post the Chipotle seasoning after we get done here. But wanted to show you that prepping's pretty easy. You just wanna rotate your meat, have them sitting there. It is okay to have your meat sitting here. And really with the steak, I'm gonna put the seasoning in here. I'm gonna freeze it overnight because with the salts, and I'll read out those ingredients, as it thaws, the salts actually really help tenderize the meat. Um, you know, fat is in the meat um, and for collagen, for insulation, for giving the form to the cow or to the deer or to the bison, whatever it is you're hunting or killing or eating these days. And I'm just getting the, the Chipotle seasoning mixed in there really, really nicely. So it's just a great way to make a variety. And then again, I always kind of make extra because there's other people here or for leftover lunch or it freezes really, really well. And my family loves this Chipotle chicken. Again, you can do it in the Instapot and it shreds up really nicely. My family is not, not a fan of shredded chicken. So I can do this with beef in the Instapot and I'm okay. I can do a lemon chicken in Instapot and I'm okay, but not Chipotle chicken. They want it fried, again, just a little bit of bacon grease or they want it on the grill and then we just chop it up and it's that easy. This will fry in about 10 minutes. But I just want to show you that really in 15 or 20 minutes, I'm gonna stir my um, cabbage in just a minute, that you can really make this pretty easy. Why something's cooking, you can chop something. I think it may need to get a little more bacon grease and we just save our bacon grease from the bacon that we cook. So it's that easy to do. And I'm gonna get this stirred so you can see that, that I doubled that recipe and I have about four pounds of meat here. I did two pounds of chicken tenders, which are breast. And then my family just really prefers thighs. Thighs are tender, they heat up better. So we did two pounds of thighs. 
I'm just putting them in a pan there to get them nice and brown. I'll probably finish them off in the oven just a little bit to make it quicker so they don't dry out. And then we'll just chop them up like Chipotle chicken. So let me see if you guys have any questions down there Why I stir this. I was going to talk a little bit about goals and about missions. I know I've been off. People say, I've been off for a minute or two. Um, I went to a yoga retreat a couple weekends ago. I guess not last weekend, but the weekend before. And I was trying to go live, and I had no internet or no Wi-Fi out there, which was actually awesome in a good way. But I wanted to share so much with you. It was a beautiful place in Lawrence. There was horseback riding. We got to do stand-up paddle boards. There were big longhorn. I mean longhorns. I've been on cattle ranches my whole life, and the longhorns are probably eight or nine feet. I'm not exaggerating. I posted the pictures down below. There were longhorn. We had to get out of the way of the gator trying to get actually into the water for the stand-up paddle boards, which was awesome. You could. Um, we did yoga on the mats underneath the stars in Kansas, which was absolutely gorgeous. So cabbage is reducing down really, really nicely. You could put a little salt on there to help it go through. But as you know, when you're cooking with sea salt or kosher salt, um, pink Himalayan sea salt, to get the nutrients, now it will help you break down the meats, it'll help you break down the vegetables, but to get the nutrients, you always wanna put it on right before you eat it, not while cooking. The other thing that we're gonna make this week is we're gonna make some kale chips, organic kale chips. And we'll save that for a couple of days, but just want to let you know. So just review why you guys are jumping on. So we have the cabbage, which is almost done. You can see it's almost done here. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to add in some jalapenos because my family likes it hot. I'm also going to add in a couple tablespoons of this fresh salsa. I could have made it myself in chopped tomatoes, but again, I just want to make and show people that it's super easy. You can buy these things out at the store that's done that same day. Just check the date on it. I am gonna put in, again, about two or three, I think it's about four cups of sausage. There's a place here in town that makes local sausage. So it's a different variety, different taste, different mixture of the sausage. So I'll mix it really quick here and just show you how yummy it looks. So it's, again, two carbs that we have with the cabbage if you're having one cup of the cooked cabbage. So if you have two cups of the cooked cabbage, you're having four carbs. So let me just show you how yummy this looks. And that's it, guys. That's almost done. I put the lid on it, it would be done. And then I'll swing it over here. So that's one meal. Our Chipotle chicken is almost done. I'm going to, you can see this right here. I'm just going to turn it over. I just need to turn the fire up here a little bit. And then again, I will just do the zucchini by myself. So I'm just going to actually core the zucchini. We'll stick it on the grill tomorrow night. And I'll make some kale chips. And I've got a little more, more to do. And then when I'm going to season my meat, what we do with the seasoning. Oops, that fell on the floor. Um, and I'm also going to make some fresh guacamole tomorrow. I'll save that for you guys tomorrow. So fresh avocado. Again, when you're making guacamole, you can either just slice the, the avocado and have the avocado fresh so you could slice this and just put the chipotle meat on top or you put the fajita meat on top or you can actually make fresh guacamole which i'll do tomorrow i'm surprised how many people don't know how to make guacamole who have never made it so if you've never made fresh guacamole drop an avocado because i want to know because maybe you have made it and i've just talked to the wrong people because i just love 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 to know if you've never ever ever made it then i want to help you make it for the very first time and then, so we've got chicken tomorrow night. You're rotating our meats, we're rotating our vegetables, and then we're gonna do fajitas on Wednesday with our red peppers, with our avocado, probably have some kale chips left over. I'll probably get some lettuce, just to use a lettuce wrap for that, or maybe some low carb wraps. Nick will probably use the low carb wraps. And it's that easy to get your stuff lined up. And then another thing that we're gonna do um, on Wednesday, I learned a very easy trick. Take a mason jar, like a one quart mason jar, put in 10 or 12 eggs, a little bit of water, a little bit of salt and pepper, and just shake them up. So you shake it up, it already emulsifies it. You can leave it in the fridge. So if you want it, and it keeps it as it aerates and emulsifies in the fridge, that way if you wanna make eggs on Wednesday, and say you actually prep them tonight, which I'm gonna to do tonight, then you have them ready on Wednesday. You don't have to wait to crack the eggs to clean up the mess to get rid of the shells. And then while it's sitting in the refrigerator, also has time to get to aerate and make them nice and fluffy like a hotel egg. Then you can throw in your extra whatevers. You can throw in your extra fajita meat. You can throw in your extra kale. You can throw in your extra cabbage, but your eggs are already ready to go. Because people say, I need help planning. How do you do that? You pick a meat, chicken, meat, pork, fish, pick a meat, and then pick a two above ground greens. Dr. Ralph said people don't know what above ground greens are. It's not just lettuce, 
Zucchini is above ground green. Cabbage is above ground green. Broccoli is above ground green. You guys play, what's above ground green? Green beans are above ground green. We had asparagus last night. That's an above ground green. Uh, Brussels sprouts are an above ground green. They grow on a tree. So name an above ground green. Um, because he said everyone's gonna think it's only lettuce. Well, we know green peppers are an above ground green and they don't have to be just green. They can be things like red peppers, yellow peppers, like yellow squashes, things like that. But we do need to be eating more vegetables because you wanna make sure you're getting at least two cups of vegetables at every single meal. Um, and you wanna eat 50% raw each day and 50% cooked. So when we broil the um, kale chips, I'm probably pick up some radishes because people haven't done radish chips either and they are phenomenal. I don't really like raw radishes, but I love radish chips. And you make them the same way that you do the Brussels sprouts, the same way that you make um, cauliflower or you make, uh, if you broil, um, sorry, I'm cooking at the same time. If you're uh, making broccoli, that's the word I wanted. Sorry, I can't think of it at the same time. So anyway, <laughs> yes. Grandma Reed is saying hi to Danny, and she'll also definitely tell her hello back. So again, let me know if you guys have any other questions. We're probably gonna deep dive a little bit into pain the rest of the month. September is National Pain Awareness Month, and we know there's 1.3 billion, billion people that suffer from pain syndromes. That can be anywhere from CRPS, for RSD, to fibromyalgia, to cancer, to migraines, from PCOS, it can be a large gamut of things. We could have started at the head, I guess, and gone from migraines there, right down, all the way down to gastrointestinalitis, to gastritis, to big toeitis, or to gout. So this is National Pain Awareness Month. I wanna give some tips to help people start helping themselves when it comes to pain, and it's not just about prescription drugs. So number one day today, I should've been doing this all month, but I'm really embarrassed that I haven't, drink more water. It's scientifically proven that when your body gets dehydrated, it turns into like, like beef jerky versus prime rib, it causes the muscle fibers to be very, very tight. Two to 3% dehydration increases your pain fibers. And it is all in your brain. People say pain's all in your mind. It is all in your mind. Your pain fibers, your pain centers, it starts in your brain, as in everything is in your mind. Your smelling, your words, your sense of taste, your sense of vision, it's all in your mind. So it is in your mind, but we know that we can actually help that. We know that sugar feeds inflammation and there's certainly foods that actually fight inflammation. Things that we're making tonight like cabbage fight inflammation, ditching the dairy help fight inflammation, fats fight inflammation. So I'm cooking in grass fed butter and coconut oil um, for my cabbage tonight. And so we know that sometimes even pork actually can be pro-inflammatory if it's actually been processed the wrong way. So we wanna make sure we're rotating things. Again, rotating lots of different vegetables and eating a variety of color like we have here. So we have lots of different colors of the rainbow. Our, our, um, we have different colors here. We have red and orange. I know you guys can see the color, uh, yellow and green. So again, thank you guys for joining me here. And Dory, you're so, so, so right. There's so many people that we need to help and educate. And we know that the prescriptions are not the end all. We also know there's so many people who are actually think the third leading death amongst the world are people having side effects to pharmaceutical medica medication. So if you're not unhealthy in the first place and you don't have to take, um, take your prescription medication. So I'm not blaming the pharmacies at all, but I wanna help people who have pain syndromes know that there are ways that you can help yourself from simply number one, drinking more water. And then I've got a great video on sleep. Actually, I have a 10 step video over my YouTube channel, which is Ask Dr. Heather. I think that's why I haven't talked about it because I don't know where to start because I could talk about it for 14 and a half days straight without stopping or breathing. <laughs> but again, let me know where you guys are watching from. Thank you for the hearts. Let me know. Um, let me know if you guys have questions on anything. And you, I think you all know that I have a very rare pain syndrome called a reflex sympathetic dystrophy where there is no cure for it. There is um, there are some medications that people try, but generally they don't work. Um, I have had denial letters from Mayo written from the top neurosurgeons and the top orthopedists in the country. Um, and the, yeah, and not in just the US, but also I would say globally the top neurosurgeon. And they say, nope, we don't have anything else we can do for her. So I tell you, I'm still here, I'm still fighting. I wanna share that the ketogenic way of living an autoimmune ketogenic diet has definitely helped me. Sugar is not my friend uh, for many reasons. We know that you can't gain weight and stay in your wheelchair or your prosthesis and the ketogenic way of life or low carb living absolutely helps me. It helps with my sleep, which is so important. We'll talk about sleep and pain because that is the secret weapon to everybody's health. 
whether it's heart disease, whether it is a pain syndrome, whether it's hormonally balanced, it is all about sleep too. So I'm gonna get off before I get on my soapbox and get the rest of my chicken cook as my Chipotle chicken's done. It's time for me to rotate, but it's this easy, friends. I know I've talked a long time, but thanks for staying with me. Thanks for joining me on this Monday, Monday day. And then let's chat soon. And I can't, oh, thank you, Dory, for sharing. And um, don't forget to jump over to Colorful Dory. She has amazing recipes. She is a queen of TikTok. I still am trying to figure out how to unlock my TikTok account. But you can go over to Instagram and you can join me there at Ask Dr. Heather or my blog or my YouTube channel. Also, more of my story of recovering from CRPS or RSD in my amputee story. Today, I walk with two canes, woo -woo, which is better than two crutches. So I have two canes coming in Amazon, which I'll be super excited to share with you all. Um, and that's on my uh, Instagram, which is Ampu Mom, as an amputee mom and keto doc. That's me, mama four boys. So Ampu Mom Keto Doc is that over there. So just if you know someone else who needs some hope and inspiration, I try to share more of that stuff there. So I gotta get my salt out, I gotta get my chicken cooked, and I'll be seeing you guys later. Thanks for joining me.